Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to a brand new Fire Emblem Let's Play adventure. I am Mecha and I am joined, as always, by my co-host Raisins. How are you doing today, Raisins? Doing super well, Mecha. I am so excited for this run. We're doing, what is it, Fire Emblem 8, so we're back to GBA. Yes. One of the classics. This is my first Fire Emblem game ever. Ooh, Sacred Stones, baby. Good thing we're doing lunatic mode. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Which experience. Probably not the experience you had as your first time around, because most people who are familiar with Fire Emblem will probably know Sacred Stones as a pretty easy game overall. I think it's usually ranked mm -hmm. as one of the easiest. And I would love to play this game a little bit more like normal. I've played it several times on the channel in some kind of warped states. Like, I would change something super significant about the, about the game. Because the basic game is so easy that it is not super enjoyable for me to let's play. So I changed a couple things that I think will make it more exciting, more challenging, and more fresh. And the first one of those is what I'm calling it, Lunatic Mode, because I increased the enemy growths by 60% in every stat except Defense and Resistance. Now, when you hear 60%, you might think, well, does that mean they're going to get so much stronger? Like, if you have experience increasing the enemy growth in this game using a randomizer like Yune or some other kind of difficulty hack, you might know that 20%, 30% is about the recommended amount, 60% is just insane. Uh, but keep in mind that 60% is multiplicative. So enemy stats will increase by a significant amount over the course of the game, but it's not going to be as steep as it is when you use additive. And the difference between these are like kind of hard to explain. Maybe raisins? You're, you're good at math, right? How would you explain that difference? Yeah, so multiplicative means that all enemy growths are being multiplied by 1.6. So, for example, a let's say a hero has a speed growth of 50%, then I multiply that growth by 1.6, which means now it is a growth of 80%. But it was, which is so... That's like, what, a 30 percentage point increase? So he's still, like, way faster. He's still getting tons more speed. But it's not as much as if it were an additive boost of 60%. Additive means I add 0 0.6 to all the growth rates. So a hero who has a 50% uh, speed growth would now have a 110% speed growth. That would be an additive speed boost. So because it's multiplicative, that means um, units only really get stronger in the categories in which they're already strong. And in the categories where they're, they're kind of weak, like they get a boost, but it's a really minor one, right? And let's not forget, this is only applying to enemies who have level ups. So, you know, if there's an enemy who doesn't have very many level ups, whether because they're in the early game or because they're uh, just a lower level promoted unit that occurred in the mid game, they won't be getting this boost as drastically. Yeah, the I've looked around in save files to try and balance the amount that I was increasing the growth by. And this is what I found like a happy balance between uh, I want to make the game more difficult, but not less fun. And like, I do want to see some cap stats. So around, I think the end of the route split, like the end of uh, chapter 13, 14 or so, you're gonna see enemies with some cap stats running around. Uh, but I purposely kept, for example, the defense and resistance low because in my experience with having increased enemy growth is that the main lack of fun comes from not being able to damage enemies. And I do want to make sure I can use like a variety team and not just only use the best units. So. This way they can all still chip in without being reduced to doing zero damage. And so. this keeps the difficulty like pretty high too as well, does it not? Because, you know, if you think about it, if the enemy defense and res is lower, then the chance that, you know, they attack you, deal some damage, and they get killed on the counter to open up the square for another attacker, like, rises, as it were, right? It's very... Like, if the defense and res were really high, it'd be really easy to, let's say, only take one combat on enemy phase because you just don't kill the enemy. But now it's like the chance to suffer from success, as it were, is much higher. <laughs> yeah, I do wonder if that's going to come into play. There definitely are some choke pointy chapters where that might come in handy, because that's one of the main ways to reduce difficulty is uh, choke pointy chapters. But I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I don't know how this is going to impact things exactly. It's part of the adventure. It's like, I have no idea what I'm getting myself into, uh, other than being yeah. rather familiar with FE8. So the next thing I want to introduce real quick before we get started is the route split. As you might know, this game has a split between chapters 9 and 14, where you can either go with Erica or with Ephraim, you get a different set of chapters depending on it, and afterwards they merge again. Uh, I want to do something that I don't think anyone has ever done before in this game, which is apply Radiant Dawn's route split structure of part 4 to Sacred Stones. So what I'm going to do is send the units from the early game to different paths, um, either to Erica or Ephraim. I can't do this within the game itself because it's not programmed to, but what I'll simply do is I'll deposit all the items on the units that I'm not using on one route and just don't field them, basically. Under, unless they have, like, recruits uh, another playable character like Tana recruiting Cormag, uh, I will 
allow exceptions for that. I'll get exactly into the, the ramifications on the gameplay itself when we get there, but know that the early game units, there's like 15 of them that I can send to different routes. I will split them up after chapter 8, and that means we can't, for example, have Seth on both routes. And I think this will significantly impact not just the way we play the mid game, but also the early game, because I have to make sure that I can handle myself on both routes, because we all know, for example, Seth, I brought him up a couple times already, He's super good, but he can't be on two routes at once. So yeah. one of these uh, Renee twins is going to have to find a different way to get around, right? That's for sure. And uh, speaking of the mid game, because you kind of brought it up, uh, there are some units whom you recruit in that route split stretch. For example, like Garrick, you recruit in the route split stretch. I think like what, what, once we get there, we'll address like how the recruitment of Garrick works, like which route actually gets them, which route doesn't get them. But we'll, we'll, we'll leave that for when we get closer to that to that stage of the game. Yeah, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there for sure. I have something in mind, but I need to like finalize a little bit in my head. But I think I know what I'm doing. Uh, another yeah. thing that happens at, at around the route split is you gain access to the Tower of Volney. Uh, it's just a place where you can fight easy monsters to kill to catch up on a level units. I usually don't use this place because it's not super interesting and I think grinding generally you know, doesn't make the game interesting. But since I'm going to be a little bit starved for units to use and because I want to use different units than I normally use and because I think it'd be fun, and it's kind of part of the in intended design, I'm going to use the Tower of Falny a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll use it to catch up units that severely depends on catching up with it. Um, there's three units I have in mind for this. I don't think I need to allow any others. That's Amelia, Ewan, and Marissa. Uh, these units are commonly regarded as bad or low tier or whatever you want to call them because they can't really fight enemies by themselves. You have to baby them a lot. And I think it'd be more interesting to do that in the tower grinding session. Uh, I'll probably not have like a full dedicated episode to it, uh, but I'll think of something. Um, so I'll use those to get them like, I'll probably allow like one round of tower for each to get them where they need to be. Uh, for Emilia, I know you and I will probably just mean promoting them to their first tier, and Marissa will just get whatever many levels. I think that way the cast gets a little bit more balanced and it'll be more interesting, and I'll get to use units that I don't really use very often, at least. Uh, that's the plan. Uh, did I forget anything? Because I think this was most of what I wanted to discuss in the introduction, right? Yeah, this was everything that you put in this little notepad that you sent me, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Okay, in uh, in that case, we can get started. All right, here it is, Sacred Stones. And we're going to erase my test data over here and start a new file. Oh, we were looking at O'Neill for like, what, 10 minutes for, <laughs> before this started? Yeah, just talking about the weather. Literally, that's what <laughs> we were doing. We'll play on difficulty, of course, and we'll just get started. I won't show the story in this one because... I, th I find it easier to just play the game yourself if you want to experience the story fully. I think most people watching have probably experienced the story themselves. But if you haven't, yeah. go play it. Play alongside. It'll be a fun experience for you. Um, it's definitely a game worth playing in full. It's one of my favorites for sure. Even though oh, yeah. it has flaws, all Fire Emblem games do. And this one's on my least. Also, just I just, want, I just kind of want an excuse to play FE8. It's such a fun game. It's, a, it's such a good game, too. I always find it, like, a great sandbox for new challenge runs as well. Like, whenever yeah. I have a new idea, it's like, I gotta try an FE8 first, right? So. That's definitely the main quality of FE8. I've, I've never, I've, I have not modified a game as often, like, as I have modified FE8. I think that goes for most people. It's like the main game that people base their ROM hacks off and everything. Yeah. Well, it has, like, a really powerful engine for ROM hacking, too, right? Because it has, like, skills. It has, yeah. um... Better effect, like, but not better effect in this. I, I don't know what it has, mostly skills. Yeah. But... <laughs> no, it, it used to be FE7, but now it, it kind of became FE because it got better tools. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Seth. Seth's getting nerfed oh, already. That's a total fight. Yeah, Seth, Walter. Isn't it true, like, if Seth used the Silver Lance here, he, like, probably just kills Walter? Uh, isn't he rigged to miss, though? Oh, I, I guess so. Missed. But, you know, details. Details. Okay, so we're going to be getting caught up by O'Neill and his, and, his, and his gang over here. I'm going to set my options before I forget. Just play with animations on for now. Cursor off. Okay, like so three guys, yeah. Yeah. Like you said at the beginning, enemies early on don't really have much of a change in their stats. But there is a change I checked just to make sure that the ROM was working. And for example, you can see here that O'Neill has 8 speed, and I think normally he has 7. Um, I think when I checked my game earlier, he actually had 9, so Seth couldn't oh, even no? double him. Uh, but fortunately, we rolled a, a bad O'Neill this time. But enemy stats are a bit random. I mean, they, they have they have growth for a reason, and sometimes there's some RNG involved. Um, something else? Yeah, we're... Yeah, go ahead. We're playing on hard... We're, yeah, we're playing on hard mode, so O'Neill's stats, and really every enemy stats is like a slightly random roll. 
So yeah. getting into like the exact mechanics of how that works is like probably beyond the scope of this video. Probably, but, yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised with that because I thought the bosses and actually these two Axe Fighters here stats were fixed. So yeah, did sorry. you also go through in cases where there were fixed spaces and just change them manually or? Mm, no, I didn't go through them manually. I did have a separate thing to increase boss stats. I think they'll also increase as the game goes along. Uh, I don't know exactly how boss stats are generated and how they're buffed by Yune, the program I used to modify this game. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the point is bosses will be stronger too. But most of the time, bosses stand still don't already do anything. Um, well, we're going to be here for a little bit too, because I would like to get back to character analyses, aka just talking about a unit for a little bit before we get to actually using them and go to town on the enemies. So mm -hmm. how about we talk about Erika for a little bit. So Erika, I think, has a lot in common with previous lords. You know, uses rapier, uses swords, seizes thrones, kind of low strength. Uh, much better speed, though, and that way she's a lot more like Lin from FE7. And the cool thing about this game is that the rapier that she has has triple effectiveness, whereas for someone like, I don't know, Eliwood or even Hector uh, has to deal with double effectiveness. So she does a lot more damage to Cavaliers, for example, and to Armor Knight. She can actually one round them a lot of the time, which is good. Uh, you don't have to, many to fight them in the early game, but if you preserve the rapier a little bit, you can definitely get use of it later on. Uh, that's kind of the only thing that I really like Erika for, because she does have a lot of underwhelming problems. Uh, the game is... A little bit biased against sword users in general, like most Fire Emblem games, so sometimes her damage output is lacking because she's fighting a lance user. Um, doubling is nice, but a lot of people can double normally. Although, with the increased enemy growths, it's possible that Erika will double enemies that some other units will not. So it's possible that Erika's speed will be a standout trait that's super important. Either way, I will have to train Erika, because I she's deployed in every map that she is in automatically. So there's always going to be a slot for her in Erika route. And since I'm playing both routes, you know, I'm going to be having to use her no matter what. So might as well make sure she doesn't die in one hit. I can actually contribute. And in the late game, she'll get a super strong weapon of her own and be able to contribute. So I think she'll be an important part of this playthrough. But I do know that enemy growth can significantly hurt Erika. Which is, she's one of the reasons why I had defenses not increased. Because I think if they yeah. were increased, she'd have so much trouble even dealing damage sometimes. So that's True. my experience with or, Erika. Yeah. Or, or the rapier would be our only solution against Arbonites, right? And we just break it. Yeah. But... Yeah, I, I do kind of agree that uh, she is a little bit underwhelming in this game, especially the game's vanilla state. I think vanilla is kind of a bad environment for her because kind of uh, the draw to sword users is that their weapons are very reliable and very accurate, uh, but that only really matters in games that have, you know, really difficult enemies and enemies who are strong enough to, like, threaten consequences if you miss them. Whereas in FE8, uh, a lot of the enemy stats are just kind of so low and the other weapon stats are good enough that, you know, what really matters more is, you know, can your weapon counterattack them or can your weapon actually attack the enemy? And that's kind of why, that's kind of why like hand axes and javelins are usually so dominant in FE7 and FE8 discussions. It's because of the enemies being uh, weak enough, as it were, that the only thing that matters is can you attack them? But kind of getting back to Erica, I do think that in this playthrough, when the enemy stats are upped, we'll kind of see, like, will the hand axes or javelins be enough? Because if they aren't, then a unit like Erika, who has the Seven Might Rapier, right? Like, I really can't emphasize how powerful this weapon is when you look at it on paper. It's like Seven Might, triple effective, 95 accuracy. Mm -hmm. This thing's kind of, like, really good and really reliable. And, you know, she's the only person who can wield it. I know in, Ar I know in Erika, you get a second copy of it sometime in, like, Chapter 9. So the fact that she can use it is actually a real draw. And the fact that she has, I don't want to say like pretty uncontested EXP for the early game, but she has a lot of easy opportunities to get EXP in this early game, even with this ROM hack on, right? Mm -hmm. Because like there's a lot of level one enemies she can fight. Uh, people oftentimes say there's like a bias against sword users with like lots of lances and few axes. I find that to not really be the case, that it's like generally pretty balanced among all the games. Um, but I may, may, maybe I'm wrong and maybe the math is like just kind of actually totally against her favor in this, because a lot of the lance users are units like Cavs, who if she can double, then she just kills them with a rapier anyway, right? Like, who cares that there's a weapon triangle? Yeah, it's mostly a defensive here. problem, right? I think FE8 has a bit more axes and a bit less lances compared to FE7, for example. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit better for her. There's definitely chapters where she can just use her triangle to dodge things, which is really nice. I think in any case, like, using her, especially in this early game where there's all these level 1 enemies, is going to be pretty paramount for this playthrough. Uh, because kind of preparing her for the later stages of the game, even just really simple things like getting some extra points of HP is like really nice on Erica in order to like ensure her survivability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
we should uh, get onto that as soon as possible. But first, we gotta talk about the god, the man himself, good old Seth. Um, I've already said a lot about Seth without even talking about Seth specifically, but just in case you were wondering if I can, if anyone's opinion has changed in the past couple minutes, it has not. Seth is an absolute god, he's gonna destroy everything. But I can't make him destroy everything because, at least for one route, Seth will not be there, so I can't have him carry everything. I have an idea of where I want to send him already, but that does mean that I have need to have someone else pick up his slack if I don't use him there, because wherever Seth goes, I feel pretty safe. He's gonna have more bulk, more strength, uh, generally about as much speed, if not more, than everyone else. He's gonna have javelins, like Raisin said, countering things is really good. Uh, he has access to the Silver Lance for like emergency kills if we need that to happen. Uh, he can use any sword too, so if we get like a Silver Sword, he can use that too, because his weapon ranks are A and A. He doesn't have access, like someone like Marcus does, or any other GBA Paladin, but honestly that would just be unfair, as opposed to just slightly unfair. He is just super, super good. I do wonder if his... Um, if he's gonna like struggle with anything that he does not struggle with in vanilla, with the en increased enemy growth, like enemies are gonna have, I think about like one to four points more in certain stats, and that could just swing the things the way that Seth suddenly looks weaker. But I'm pretty sure that no matter what enemy it is, if Seth looks a little bit weaker, everyone else is gonna be even worse by comparison. I think he'll do just fine. What do you think? Yeah, I, th I think he should still remain like one of the better units because I mean, anytime you take Seth and compare him to like one of his neighbors, as it were. Like, he always ends up being ahead until, like, the very, 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 very end of the game. But at that point, it's like, it's the very end of the game, and I'm sure that, like, well, it, like, it's such uncharted territory. We kind of, like, know, we, or we kind of, like, don't know who's going to be good, who's going to be uh, activated by that point. Also, there's, like, legendary weapons flying around, so who really, who really minds? I know, like, the, the real story of Seth in the vanilla game is, like, he's so good. And then as he's just kind of solving the game and solving the problems for you in the early game, especially killing bosses, he's just getting this extra EXP and the EXP is helping him just stay ahead of all the other units. Like it's a, it's a real rich get richer type situation, right? And that's kind of like the story of vanilla FE8. Uh, in this game, even though his growths are actually really good, like they're rather high, I do kind of wonder if he'll end up running out of steam. Because, you know, as I mentioned, there are some other units who, you know, if you give them lots of level ups, can actually surpass Seth at level, you know, X, mm -hmm. once you level them up to the same point. And so I actually do wonder if, you know, the same FE8 strategy of just having Seth solve everything, and then the act of solving everything sets him, sets him ahead or, st or keeps him to, or helps him to stay ahead. I actually do wonder if that's going to work or if it's actually just going to run out of steam and fall off. So yeah. I have a feeling that it will uh some people i know who are like slightly more experienced with these plus growth hacks say that seth does fall off on you know such and such percent or such and such percent but um i'm, I'm kind of curious and I, I i don't think that that should deter us from using him in the early game because at the end of the day he's still really strong he's still silver lance he still has eight move and rescue drop like all these things are still really good even if the late game is going to be un unfavorable unfavorable towards him yeah i agree well let's find out uh, I would like to use this opportunity to train Erica a little bit, but I do know that if you do the wrong move here, she dies <laughs> because there's two 40 hits that can just get her. Uh, yeah. I can't say I remember the ERN sequence. Uh, we could do something a little cheesy if you want, which is um, like having Seth rescue Erica and stand here. Or mm -hmm. we could just YOLO it and hope that she survives. Just, just stand here menacingly and just wait and turn. Just don't suffer from success, right? <laughs> Yeah, the, the classic FE8 strat, I think, is to just, like, end turn, basically. Yeah. If you it's haven't wasted any... There's, there's, like, it's the world's most common RN manip, right? <laughs> Alright, let's just end turn like, and see what happens. Maybe she'll die. Everyone knows, It'll be fun everyone knows this one. Yes. Yeah, I think the, the, the thing I usually do is, like, kill one fighter with Seth and kill the other one with Erica. But, mm -hmm. you know, we gotta milk what we can. I don't know what we're facing here. Uh, I will also reserve the option to... Um, Make the game harder for myself if I think it's too easy, or make it slightly easier if it's really too hard. But I don't think that will happen because we are both really, really good at Fire Emblem, right? So we don't need to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, me, you good at Fire Emblem. I'm sure. I mean, like I, like I said, this, this is the first game I played, so I got the most experience with it. It's gotta, it's gotta count for something, right? You could not be more experienced with a Fire Emblem game than you are with FE8. That's true. It's impossible. Get him. I do really Here wish I that. Talk, like, I, I, really, I, was, I was gonna say I do really wish that Seth didn't double O'Neill. because <laughs> I could save some rapier <laughs> uses that way. Although we could do the oh, funny yeah. thing, we could rescue Erica now if we want to. Oh yeah, we could totally burden him down. 16, right? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. 
Because if I don't, so, he's kind of double and murder him, right? Yeah, he is. He's not strong enough yet, so we just... He's, he's a full HP, so we can, like, rescue the stamp wherever we please. Yeah, then fight him once and just drop him, right? Yeah, just drop Erica. Oh, oh I guess I should move further, I guess. Oh, well, yeah, just I was wait like, one more turn. Yeah. And turn into <laughs> Get out of my Say forest. No LTC. Get out of my forest. And then he doubles you, huh? And I crit with 2%. Hey, plus this gives us Seth XP. Like efficiency. That's right. Efficiency. Seth's weapon rank? No, he's gonna get at Homo rank. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's what some people want with him, I think. Really? I guess, like, it is a, it does have more might than Vidafnir. Yeah, it's better, and also you... Uh, there's, like, less good sword users than there's lance users, so you, that way you can give Vidafnir to, I don't know, Vanessa, Tana, name a, name a paladin, when you can... And, like, who else is gonna use at Homa, reasonably speaking? Like, Joshua, maybe, if you... That's true, get... Yeah. Come on! Ugh. Disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting. Yeah, no. Are you injured? No, I'm just bad at Fire Emblem. No. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> or play my chapter god. one as well, because the prologue is really short. Yeah, I was play chapter one. <laughs> yeah, this this video is only prologue, guys, exactly. <laughs> disgusting. I I she really like wanted like forty percent strength growth. <sighs> She's like sixty like, percent speed high. too, like what? Like forty percent strength is like pretty high for GBA standards, right? Disgusting. So. Okay. Alright, what happens here? Uh, well, the first thing that happens is Erica no longer doubles fighters. <laughs> oh, she doubles... Oh, she doubles this one. She doesn't double this one. She doubles the other ones, I think. Okay, so... Five, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this soldier is a dumbass and does, like... He has a weird AI Nothing. bug where he either moves or attacks, but he can't do both. So... What we could do is just have Erica move forward and uh, just have her fight this one goon. Or just rescue again and drop her on the fort next turn. Kind of like that. I mean, like, why not walk her to the fort next turn? Well, if we rescue, we can weaken this fire to the point where Erica can kill him. Whereas otherwise, she does, like, ha not even half his HP, I think. She does, like... Does, does she? She does... I guess you're right, actually. 11, 12. Yeah, she does do enough. This way, we can save some rapier uses. Because I think... Oh. Like, one one bad experience I have with Erica is that you use the rapier to, like, 20 uses, and then you're like, oh, I don't want to use it anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then you gotta, like, conserve, even though you know you're getting a second one. Do you actually go with the fort? Because, like, Seth could get trapped here, and then we can't even drop. Yeah, I was thinking maybe going out uh, here instead. And that way, they'll attack from, like, here and here, and Erica could still be... Uh, uh, I think there's no need. Yeah. Actually, we can go to the west of the fighter, because then they definitely... Then we'll definitely have a square, see? So yeah. yeah, sure. Seems good. Works for me. The old burden down Seth strats. Yes. This is what we do for Erica. <laughs> Hashtag do. I mean, we kind of get this girl XP somehow. I think, ah, the, I think the speed alone would have been so helpful. But like you said, I think max HP would have been really nice. Mm -hmm. Strength was like, just like a, massive. Anything not skill, right? <laughs> that has to be the least helpful stat for her to get. Like even a point of luck could help her with some. Uh, with some. Yeah. All right. New boys. New boys. Let's talk about these guys as well. Uh, let's do the less exciting one first. Um, so Gilliam is an armor knight, and when I first saw Gilliam, like, I played this game after FE7. This was my second Fire Emblem game, and I saw a person that looked like Oswin, and I got really happy. I was like, ooh, <laughs> it's like Oswin, right? And it turns out that he's like, yeah, he's like Oswin, except he's levels down five times, and he procced a bunch of stats along the way. So he's significantly slower, less bulky, and less powerful, with not a whole lot of upside, to be honest. Like, he has Bartray's base speed and only 25 HP, which, it just feels a lot lower. Uh, but he still does Armor Knight things in vanilla, at least for the early game. Like, he can take hits just fine. I wish his stats were a little bit higher, but he still has more bulk than anyone not named Seth right now. And it's good enough for most of it. And also in this game, uh, unlike in FE7, Armor Knights can promote to Great Knights, which gives them extra mobility. And it still gives them uh, Swords, Lances, and Axes, like the Paladins had in FE7. Um, generals get the same weapons, by the way, so that's also a slight buff to Gilliam. And overall, that's nice. The problem I face with Gilliam and difficulty hacks is usually that uh, the enemies... You, in vanilla, they're like borderline good enough to double him, but usually not. And in like increased enemy growth, they are definitely good enough to double him. I think one of the fighters actually might have 7 speed. Or like, if these guys have like one more speed, they would already double Gilliam, which the Brigands next chapter might already have. So that's like significantly going to hurt him. So if enemies can double Gilliam, the extra bulk he has is kind of worthless. But if they can't, then usually he takes less damage to most people, he can two-shot them, and he's kind of fine as long as he can get to the combat in time. So, if you have units that can carry Gilliam to the front line, he's kind of fine, but in my experience, he's most useful in the early game, and then roughly in the mid-game, other units have almost as much survivability, but are way better in all the other areas, and so he kind of gets outclassed there. But, 
Yeah, she's not terrible. You could do worse than Gilliam, but you could also definitely do a lot better, I think, right? Yeah, it's like, I mean, three three speed nine defense. It kind of looks like a lot of bulk on paper, but like it, it it really runs out so fast, right? I guess like there may be a few places, maybe against monsters where uh, the monster enemies have really weak might, and so it's kind of nice to use him to kind of wall out a bunch of them or you know fight for them at once. Maybe he's able to do that, but some other unit uh, is not able to because like Seth is way off in another corner of the map. But I I don't know. It's like these kind of really defensive stats it's hard for me to get really excited about them when like like three speed and nine defense a lot of other units can get there right like i think base kyle has more than that yeah i'm pretty sure definitely in the speed so, department yeah it's like it, it's really not that hard to get a unit as tanky as this or tankier especially with this 25 base hp and so even you know as an iron knight doing iron knight things you know proccing defense he seems like kind of lackluster and then in every other area, it's like, what does he do? He can, you know, stab one guy with an iron lance once or throw a javelin once if it hits, right? And I, I, I don't know. Everything about Gilliam is kind of... You know what? I, I thought I was going to say some nice things about Gilliam today. I'm just totally <laughs> slandering him. It's like, true. His hit rate is also pretty stop. bad. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, that's, it's, it's a problem for him for sure. Like, we were memeing on, like, how the Erika skill level up is totally useless, but that's because she uses swords. It's like six skill lances is kind of trash, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, his luck is also like hot garbo. Um, he can grow defense most than better than most people for sure, but it's gonna take a while for that to catch up. Let's let's look at more a more exciting unit, right? Let's look at Franz instead. There we go. Franz is, has always been one of my favorite units because I think it was always because I was annoyed having to kind of choose between strength and speed with my Christmas calves, and then Franz comes in, and it kind of feels like he has both because his bases are like pretty good. Are like low one level with FE seven, and if we know one thing about low one. Sure, his growths are bad, but his bases are pretty good, and Franz has slightly better growth, so he feels better. Uh, I've kind of become less hype on Franz as time went along, and I realized he doesn't get as much as he did in my like 100% growth playthrough. That one definitely changed, uh, made me think Franz was better than he was. But in the end, I think Franz is like the gold standard for what a growth unit should be like for casual players. Like, if you're just playing FE8, especially vanilla, and you just, you know, you fight an enemy, you vaunt occasionally, you hit them, uh, you keep on moving, you don't really do anything special like LTCing or whatever, Franz is fine. He's, he's as good as a normal, regular growth unit, not Seth, can be. And he's perfectly serviceable. He works. He has swords and lances, and he can promote to Paladin, or Great Knight, and if he gets Great Knight, he gets axes as well, if you're into that. He's fine. He does all right. He's not a monster. He's not going to destroy everything. But he's alright, he's a good bro growth project, he's a good user of the first Nightcrest if you're looking for someone to use that. He works alright, he's not super amazing, but, you know, I like him a lot. I'm probably gonna train him just to have him somewhere, because if you do, like, feed everything to him, he can become Seth, number two. But with some drawbacks, like less sword rank, uh, less resistance, for sure. But he's kind of good, he's kind of good. I like Franz a lot, personally. You? Yeah, he's a. I mean, he's like a growth unit among growth units, right? Like he, his stats here are not really that good, frankly. Like I understand maybe he can like double a soldier with an iron lance. This is pretty good, but for a long while, like he's really relying on proccing these strength and speed procs. And I can't exactly remember his growth, so I don't know if you remember them off, off, off the top of your head. I just know it's a bunch of forties. Yeah, it's about in the forties. So they can probably see it with overlays, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, our, our audience really has an advantage over us right now. <laughs> but, you know, as far as the growths go, I mean, I know it's it's really possible for France to just, like, get in slumps of several levels in a row of getting, like, no important stats. It's like, ah, what's going on here? Uh, but, you know, that that's just kind of the, the personal experience and the anecdotal evidence. On paper, I do think that, you know, the fact that he starts at level 1 and therefore earns so much EXP from all of his combat actions does really help him uh, to grow and to level up and to get those stats. And kind of similar to, I think we said the same thing with every unit in our FE6 run. It's like, you know, take this unit and use them. And the idea with a growth unit is if they get good growths, then keep using them. And if they get bad growths, then just bench them for the next guy that comes along. And I think that's totally appropriate to do with friends. Now, outside of his growths and stats, uh, he is also like a 7-move cab. He does have 16-8 and can do things like Kanto Drop. And that's like still pretty valuable for the first few maps, right? Like, especially... Uh, if we decide to pick up some other training project, like if we decide to abandon Franz and we're training Erica instead, Franz will still be like instrumental in Erica's training because he can do, you know, rescue drops and he can like reposition units around. 
And that is also extremely helpful, especially for, for the first few maps, because like the enemies are kind of passive on those maps. And so just being able to like attack in with any unit and then dart away with your uh, with your Seth and your Franz to bring them to safety is actually like really important on these maps for training. Yeah, for sure. I think um, we'll probably find that Franz is going to be like perpetually one or two. It's going to be the, the procs are really going to determine everything with Franz. Like if we manage to feed him a level here, we see he gets like strength and speed. He's already in business in a lot of a lot of ways. Uh, but I think he can like one round soldiers. Yeah, he can one round detail base if you want him to. Uh, what we can do is like have Gilliam take this hit for him, and then we have Franz finish him off. Just you know the classic. I think that's pretty good. Um, but it does kind of interfere with our little Erica plan over here. Um, because well, they might go for does Gilliam. it. Because one thing that I was thinking about is actually these guys are really low, and I think they have healing AI parameters. So as long as we like occupy the forts, then I think they're just gonna like run around and do nothing pretty uselessly. That seems really fun. So, so we can still do this, I guess. And then just... Uh, yeah, but... Oh, how could you occupy the forts, though? Uh, well, actually... Hmm, maybe not occupy the forts, because here's the thing. If we block it off, then they might see the fort and like try to move to it. Uh -huh. But, you know, we're, we're blocking it off, right? Uh, okay, like, if we, stood, if we stood on it, they wouldn't see the fort. You know what I mean, right? Let's see it. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. I hope we can see this in action here, right here. Yeah, yeah. He's a sword to finish this guy so that Franz doesn't get wrecked if he does decide to get it. Oh, 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 come oh. on. It's okay. They have healing AI, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? right? right. We're going to lose two vulnerabilities. That's the worst part of it. <laughs> uh, nah, no, look, 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 look. He'll be fine. He'll Trust be fine. me, bro. Oh, okay. Okay. So, well, yeah, I guess we're feeding Gilliam now. Did they kill Gilliam? Uh, there's no way, Okay, right? no, they don't. No, uh, they don't. But uh, looks like Gilliam is killing them. There we go. He's mad you said mean bad. things about him. Why are they going for him? That's so weird. I, I guess I see the lethal if Gilliam didn't kill in the counters. Well, there's only one fighter left, right? Or oh, there's only one soldier left. Yeah, well, whatever. I guess uh, Gilliam just took two kills for himself. It's fine. There's Nick's speed curve. So, He'll be okay. He's setting up this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's kind of like the, the story of Fire Emblem. If you're under level, then you get more EXP, right? Yeah, so. definitely. Okay, Franz, it's time for you to catch up on that a little bit. Uh, okay. Yeah, if I just go from the right here, then uh, it'll be fine. It's gonna miss again, watch him. Yeah, that's, then I would have to block him and stuff. It'd be very annoying. Hmm. Is this an opportunity to trade an Iron Sword over to Erica and continue the training, or is that just like not something you're interested in doing? I'm interested, but I mean, I kind of want Franz to do this too. Ah, fair, fair. Uh, the funny thing is, if you ever walked Erica along here, you might have noticed some reinforcements coming from here, but it triggers by ending your turn past that line with Erica. And Erica never ended her turn here. She just got dropped here. So, oh yeah, the forces haven't procced for that reason. It, um, oh yeah, it's like actions could, associated with the weight command, right? Yeah. That's what Don Don would call it. Do we? I could just wait here mm -hmm. and let the reinforcements come so we can milk them. Mm -hmm. Is like, now yeah. the time, or do you want to? Gilliam is in like range, and I think he's a lethal attack lined up on him right now. Oh, is this? I wonder if this is lethal actually. He's like, yeah, he's he's not he's not that. Oh yeah, no. he's, come on, he's not that frail. Come on, come I'll on. Move I was thinking. We just like put him on the fort and like heal him a bit, but yeah. Well, he doesn't have a full starting inventory, so I'd have to put him in range of the fighter if I had to take Franz's inventory. So like, okay, I'll just, I'll just park reinforcements. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Trust. Come I can on, always, Franz, we believe in you. I can always uh, burden Seth using Gilliam instead. Now, and then we'll have Eric. Oh, that's true, actually. Stragglers. Yeah. Gilliam's con isn't really that good. It's kind of funny you bring up Oswin, because there's like a lot of units in FE, FE8 who are just like, you know, FE7 unit, except with like two less in every stat. Yeah. <laughs> I think Gilliam's one of them. Uh, these units are so something. <laughs> oh boy. Kill. I mean, like. I was so we. Yeah, yeah, we can do it, and then if she gets hit on the counterattack, we can just like take Dropper onto a fort, right? So. Yeah, something like that. Still do the Gilliam thing to the two fighters afterwards. Yeah, good. Okay, get these people out of here. I know I'm playing. Yeah, like, not too bad. A little slow for like how easy these chapters are, but I think I don't want to get caught off guard by enemy growth randomly increasing to a point where they suddenly kill my units. Uh, Seth goes. Yeah, okay. Plus, I want to feed Erica, and she's she's not helping right now with the way she's she's feeding. Uh, just give you this phone right now. Just do the talk. Why not? Mm -hmm. So say don't canto bug whatever you do. What oh, if that's yeah. still in this game actually? Well, I want I want it to stay there anyway, right? Oh wait, you want oh. kills? What the heck, Seth? You're wait, too what? good. Seth, no. We're suffering from success. I should have taken the Seth, iron sword. Stop. No, no. It's falling apart. 
please. Should this have been? Oh, never mind. We got this one. Okay. It was a roll. Don't worry. To the rescue. It was a roll. What happens here? I bet she's still one as a soldier, I'm telling you. What, Erica? No, no, Seth. Oh, yeah, I think so too. He's gonna, like, yeah, obliterate the guy. Oh, come on, get out of here. Uh, Franz, time to one round an enemy to look good. We got to, for the camera, right? <laughs> for the camera. Get him. See, guys, Franz is good. You can kill the I'm telling you. basic. All right, here it goes. Minus this determines right. everything. This is it. All right, we're really good at this oh, game. Let's go. We're playing 0% yeah, oh growth God. right now. <laughs> Yeah, I played zero girls. <laughs> Disgusting. Look right. at this disaster. This is uh, this is not a good start of the training arc. Okay, I'll just drop Gilliam and range this soldier, and then have Erica wrap this guy up real quick. Yeah, she's got a hundred hit here. Come on, there's nothing risky about this whatsoever. Well, I could have grabbed the iron sword again. Yeah, fair enough. Whatever, we'll see it. Okay, okay, all much right, better. All Holy right. moly! We in there. We in there. Right. Yeah, much better. Nice. Now she uses steel sword as well. For whatever it's worth. I mean, sometimes it's nice, like unlocking sets steel sword early, but I don't yeah. know. It works. All right. It's like a, it's like such a trivial thing, but all right, what happens now? Oh, come on, one tile <laughs> short. Get out of here. Cringe. All right, run, Gilliam. You're done anyway. I'll just expose these three here. Uh, so just put you. Yeah. Just do this. Just do this. Trader the sword. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Do this, do this, there you go. And we're totally doing this just to hoard rapier uses, right? So I'm actually just trying to get talk combos in. Um <laughs> Oh true, true, true. We gotta get that support. Franz and Erica don't have support. That's true. Okay, mark that guy. That's probably gonna be Franz's actions for this chapter. Yeah, no, I think he's through here. I mean like he might do some rescue drops on Erica. Yeah. But we gotta take on how do you pronounce this boss's name? Uh Brigitte. Brigitte? Oh no, I always said Brigade. Uh huh. Except when I was a kid, I said Breggit. And then, <laughs> I don't know. It's adorable. Uh, I don't know. I think. Uh, I also said, mm -hmm. like, I also said Eric and Ephraim were from uh, Rainus. Rainus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do this and then Rapier try to finish him off, I guess. There you go. Wait, that Iron is so clever. How did I, how, like, I've literally never thought of that. I was just, like, bonging in there with the Rapier or the Silver Lance. I, was, like, I never do it either. I always, like, mm, let's try to hit him with the Steel Sword because the Silver Lance kills. It, it's probably technically better to give the boss kill to Sith, but I'm trying to be, like, super training as possible. Yeah, do I the can. whole, like, Seth training. Mm -hmm. Normally, it's but like, this oh, is, like, way more fun, too. So Yeah, normally it's like, oh, why train anyone when Seth Lamau? But in this case, it's a little different. All right, uh, hopefully you hit one out of two. Come on, she's got it. Got him. Easy, just trust. This can't be. This can't be. He, like, totally crit that mercenary earlier, too. Oh, another level? Come on. Yep, Come another on. one. Okay, Erica's Ooh. good now. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh, yeah, Erica's a god now. She's the carry. I guess so. The spirit of Jean is living through here. Well, that's nine turns to beat an objectively easy chapter. But we have done it. Yeah, there we go. And we get the map straight away too, don't we? Yes. So we get like That's pretty com quick. combos. Is this like the fastest that any game sends you into the map? I guess like Gaiden and Echoes do it pretty quick too, right? But What about Awakening? Uh, Awakening, I think you still have like three chapters before you... Oh, I guess so. Well, yeah, there's not much to do on the, on the map except um, like manage items and talk about characters. But we'll do these. We'll save Vanessa and friends for, uh, for next time. Vanessa and Mulder. This week, yeah, yeah. Uh, this episode has been like 90% talking and 10% gameplay. I think I don't want to decrease that ratio any further. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, that's going to be what this playthrough is like. Enemies will steadily get hard as we go along. We saw like a little bit of it here, but it's not really noticeable yet. But if you've played these patches, then you know when it you know really starts going to hell. I think it's around the mild rust split where it gets really bad and then and the rust split is where it gets really mad. So if you want to follow along, feel free to subscribe, like, comment, all that nice stuff. And uh, Raisins, as always, thank you for joining. Yeah, it was good to be on. Thank you so much. All right, we'll see you next time.